So our goal today is to launch 5,700 grams to offset their carbon footprint. We have this powerful tool to actually cool the planet during our lifetime, and nobody was doing it. It's going to be an exciting couple years. It already has, and we're not slowing down. Joe dream of flight becomes a reality. Yeah, I mean, they're also like pretty reliant on this being something that is centralizable. My name's Luke Eisman. I'm co-founder and CEO of Make Sunsets. We cool Earth by launching reflective clouds. Yeah, I was astounded to learn that one volcanic eruption, specifically Mount Pinatubo, cooled Earth by half a degree Celsius for two years. I was really, really stunned beyond that to learn that no scientists had done experiments on how we could copy this. So we decided to just start doing it. You know, I always had sustainability on my mind. I grew up with a big family of four, uh, Luke as well, four kids and then Luke has uh, five kids in his family. Food was always kind of scarce. So how to save food, how not to waste it was always on top of my mind. You know, growing up and having two young children, I started to question, you know, what kind of world am I leaving for them? It became very difficult for me to continue to be selling software uh, at a startup, making good money, you know, selling SaaS. We first met, what, five, six years ago? Yeah, Andrew was working at Indiegogo and I was working at Y Combinator and he helped support ones that wanted to launch campaigns, as well as directing ones towards us. So we got to know each other a little from that and then became friends and just kind of kept in touch over the years. When Luke approached me saying, hey man, I've got the most craziest idea in the world. When he told me about stratospheric aerosol injection, I was just like, you just launch sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere and it cools down the earth, it's sunscreen for earth. And, you know, I started to do my own research and after six weeks, I was like, okay, I'm all in, man. Yeah, I was like semi-retired in Mexico, spending most of my time spearfishing in Baja and getting itchy to do some other startup. I listened to Neil Stevenson's Termination Shock. And then as I dug into the research after finishing the book, I just became really amazed and equal parts frustrated that we have this powerful tool to actually cool the planet during our lifetime and nobody was doing it. So it just became increasingly obvious that this was one, something someone had to do, and two, they didn't require any deep science to be able to do it. Really, it was an implementation thing and being the crazy people to just go out and do it. We have launched roughly the equivalent of two million trees that last for a year. So in the grand scheme of things, that's not a lot, but we've gotten started and that's just with two people in the past you know, 20 months. Because of our CO2 emissions, it's kind of like a blanket around the earth. It holds in more of the energy from the sun than it used to. It's called Earth's energy imbalance. So CO2 results in more of that being trapped here than used to. And what we're doing is resulting in less of that entering to potentially be trapped. We do this by putting up sulfur dioxide, same thing that Mount Pinatubo and other volcanoes have. We do it really high so that it stays up there a long time. Specifically, we hit the stratosphere and we deploy it in certain places, basically south of 35 degrees north or north of 35 degrees south in latitude so that it will stay up for a long time and then eventually settle out by the pools. Where are we now? What are we, what are we up to? So this is uh, Luke's kind of like land. There's no like running water or anything. Uh, it's just a bunch of dirt and bricks and wood. We gotta actually come back in and push this out, so. We're gonna start setting up now. So here's all our telemetry right here. These are three uh, tanks of helium. We have another one on site, and then that blue one is actually the size of two. We've got Starlink for wireless access and then another antenna to track. So we deploy based on customer demand. So we're actually per launch profitable right now. We don't quite cover our research and development and salaries, but every balloon that we put up costs us under $1,000 
and brings in over $1,500 of revenue. So in a lot of ways, financially, we're treating this as just another boring business, a little different than many startups in that we have this crazy idea that we should make more money than we spend as soon as yeah. we can, and that that will then let us stay in business indefinitely till the world at scale catches up. And then uh, I'm excited to put ourselves out of business, not by running out of money, but by cooling earth enough that it just becomes another boring commodity, just table stakes for the Anthropocene. It's something we have to do every year to maintain temperatures at a reasonable level until we, you know, for a couple hundred years till we decarbonize at scale. One gram of SO2 in the stratosphere offsets warming of one ton of CO2 for a year. So it's a one to million leverage. The cost and the weight of a dollar bill, a dollar bill weighs one gram, can offset the warming effect of one ton of CO2. And that's, that's way more than any direct air capture plant. That's way more than uh, any tree planting service uh, by, by a huge margin. Currently the largest direct air capture plant in the world that I believe is operational, removes about 4,000 tons of CO2 per year. So we can do easily uh, more than 10X, 20X that. Volcanoes have been doing this for millions of years. We're essentially trying to replicate that uh, using these small balloons where they can reach the stratosphere. So 66,000 feet and above. This is where double the height of where commercial airliners fly. This is where there's no rain clouds. The winds are fairly stable. There's this thing called the brewer dobson circulation that moves aerosols around and essentially it coats the entire earth like sunscreen for earth, essentially. This is the, the first step in doing that. There's a uh, frost forming around the, the bottle itself. So I'm just trying to break free of that. I got it. You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Don't hurt yourself. So we use this, we use this blanket for our tarp just to have a place for us to inflate our balloons and not have pokey things that could pop it. Next thing what we'll do is uh, we will weigh the balloon itself uh, while it's empty. Generally it's around 1500 grams, but it could be off by five to 10 grams just based off manufacturing tolerances. We wanna do that to first understand the empty. So then when we fill up the SO2, we can take the difference and know exactly how much SO2 we've put into the balloon itself. So once we know that mass of how much SO2 is in the balloon itself, plus the weight of the balloon, we will then fill it up with helium and make sure that it is buoyant. Plus you have to also account for the telemetry payload to make sure that when we affix the payload to the balloon itself, plus the parachute, it'll actually go up. Sulfur dioxide is coming out as a gas. We're filling it for about five to 10 minutes. And that's like uh, roughly, uh, we're aiming for 1,700 grams per balloon. So the mass is just to protect us uh, from the sulfur dioxide because it is caustic. So these are acid vapor masks, specifically designed and made for this application. 5,700 grams, so roughly 5.7 kilograms. And so we do launches once a month and uh, some people have monthly subscriptions. Others just buy one-off purchases, just they want to support us. But uh, there's uh, different types of people buying our cooling credits to essentially cool Earth. So next thing we're gonna do is detach the balloon from the sulfur dioxide tank. And then we're gonna weigh the balloon itself uh, using a fishing scale to understand how much SO2 we have in the balloon to confirm. The total weight was 3.2 kilograms, I believe. 1,700, uh, we got to our target weight. And so now we're gonna put enough helium in here that will make it buoyant. Okay, you can let go there. I'm gonna have you turn on the helium. Are you ready? Go ahead, turn it on. All the way up. Yeah, we're good. Go ahead, turn it off. Okay, so what we'll do is we're gonna launch the balloon that, that is gonna travel that way. Okay, everybody ready? Yeah. Two, one. Clear, yes! <laughs> we always do that on the first one. We gotta walk it out more. Yeah. But 1,700 grams, roughly, going up into the stratosphere, uh, and we'll be tracking it. We've done like 10 balloon launches here. We haven't had any issues.
currently the only thing restricting us from launching 100,000 cooling credits per month is lack of demand. And so obviously we're talking to the press, we're talking to anybody that is willing to listen to say that we can scale this up very significantly. So 100,000 cooling credits offsets 100,000 tons of CO2. Rough math of that is, I believe, 4 million trees per month we can plant uh, just between two people. There's no other intervention or any other type of method that has that kind of leverage. And based off all the research and the papers written, it's all temporary, it only lasts for a year. And so even if we do too much or too little, it goes away in a year. This is by far the most ambitious thing that I've tried to build. It's the only time I've raised money as a solo founder initially, right before I brought on Andrew. And um, been surprised that it's easier than the several more reasonable ideas that I've tried to build companies around. Then all of the details are fascinating. The biggest big picture learning is that sometimes the only reason something hasn't happened is that somebody hasn't done it. I asked all of these experts on balloons. I asked one of the two people alive who has jumped out of a balloon from the stratosphere why no one had done this. And he gave me the best answer I've heard, which is basically sometimes people don't do things until people do things. I think there's probably a lot of other businesses to be built where there's no great reason someone hasn't tried to do it yet. There's certainly a lot to be invented that we have the basic tools to do it and we need crazy people to actually get out there and build. Next big milestone is trying to convince a corporation to essentially buy our cooling credits to offset their carbon footprint. Because at the end of the day, they're the large polluters on Earth. If they are willing to buy our product, we can essentially offset their carbon footprint until they figure out how to decarbonize their business. Right now it's voluntary, so they don't need to actually be buying offsets or carbon credits. Uh, quite frankly, it's sad that what they do is they attach green initiatives and sustainability initiatives to marketing. And so until they decouple those two together, where essentially, hey, we're green, so buy our stuff, I don't think corporations are going to take uh, sustainability seriously. But I think tides are shifting and corporations are becoming more aware of the impact that they're having on the environment. And so they're going to have to start looking for solutions that actually work. And we hope to be one of those solutions. The plan for three years is to still be in business. And the plan for how to get there is within the next year to hit profitability overall. As you can see, our fancy RV office helps keep costs down quite a bit. Um, so far, it's almost entirely just individuals who are buying from us. Basically, before we run out of money, we need to either become much more popular with individuals, like 5 to 10x where we're at now, or break through to where a government or several companies decide that they've had enough of treating global warming as something that they can just pretend doesn't exist or carbon credits as just a fake marketing exercise. When companies, individuals, and countries want to take actual action to measurably cool the planet, that's where we'll come into play. It's gonna be an exciting couple years. It already has and we're not slowing down.